Well, this is our final sermon in the series, Holy Hospitality, Growing in Christ One Life at a Time. And uh, Holy Hospitality, if you remember these past couple weeks, uh, Holy Hospitality is what we say, what we call radical hospitality with the purpose of making disciples for Jesus Christ. And uh, in our text today, I believe you will actually hear echoes of this holy hospitality as uh, you hear Jesus Christ's invitation to all of us in this text, which is uh, a very well-known text, so it may be familiar to many of you. Today, we'll be reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. And uh, as I do that, when I I complete this text, as we often do, I'll say, this is the word of the Lord. And if you believe it, then you can shout out with me, thanks be to God. So Matthew 11, 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know if many of you can relate to this, but uh, one of the most exhausting seasons of my life was being a young dad. Those kids, right, love having those kids around, but they were just, took a lot of energy, and I think at that time, I was busy at work, I was busy at home, and of course, I was busy in the middle of the night. Paige and I were tired all the time, but I love my kids. I always had time to play with my kids. I loved playing hide and seek with them. Now, yes, I was crammed into the back of the closet, probably promoting sciatica, but hiding provided me up to seven minutes of napping. (laughs) Talk about weary. I also, frankly, you know, when when my son shot me with his Nerf gun, if I died dramatically enough, I got another five minutes just playing dead. (laughs) And as a young dad, a new pastor, talk about weary, as a young dad, a new pastor, when leading worship, well, I'm not going to tell you exactly why the uh, silent portion of my prayers of confession lasted 10 minutes. Talk about weary. Okay, that one's not true. But, but friends, life can be exhausting. Can you relate? Yeah, we need rest. We're weary. Are you, as our scripture says, weary and carrying heavy burdens? Research tells us that high technology, the hustle culture, and money worries, those three things all wear us down, leading to what they call a generation exhausted. Nearly 40% of Americans get less than seven hours of sleep per night. And another study uh, found that if you're under 50, statistics say that you are stressed out more than half the time. And get this, from 2003 to today, stress levels have gone from 33% to nearly 50%, causing extreme exhaustion. Friends, being weary and heavy burdened is on the rise. So thank goodness for Jesus' promise. (laughs) 
The world makes us busy, but Jesus gives us rest. The world makes us scurry, but Jesus gives us calm. The world makes us worry, but Jesus gives us peace. Friends, Jesus gives us rest. Do I hear an amen? Amen. But in the opening of our text, why does Jesus praise God for hiding salvation? And rest. I mean, that's, that's not holy hospitality. Why all these hidden things? You see right here, verse 25 says, you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Now, there's two words I'm going to look at in this verse. The, the original word in this text for hidden is the Greek word krupto. Krupto. So, hidden in Greek is krupto. Any guesses to what English cognate we might have for that? That's right, cryptic. We use the word in English, cryptic. It means hidden. So, krupto, that's, that's the Greek word for hidden. And now, uh, okay, now, and the Greek word for revealed, in, in this verse, the Greek word for revealed is apocalypto. Any guesses as to the English? Apocalypse, that's right. Look at this text, this is intense text. This is cryptic and apocalyptic language here. God has cryptically hidden these things from the intelligent and apocalyptically revealed hidden things to the childlike. If God is loving, why are rest and salvation and the Messiah hidden things. We all need rest. We all need salvation. We all need healing. We all need Jesus Christ. That's what holy hospitality is all about. So why these hidden things? Jose was a middle schooler that uh, Paige and I both knew when we were doing ministry in a rough part of Spokane a number of years ago. Jose lived far below the poverty line. His father was completely out of the picture because, to be honest, He had beaten Jose's mom so badly she had brain damage. Jose had to raise himself. He would sleep on an infested mattress in the cement basement of a house shared by far too many guests. He lived uh, lived unsanitarily, and he never, was never taught personal hygiene. Jose had no energy for school, as you can imagine. Instead, his energy went toward constantly figuring out where to eat and how to care for his younger siblings. Well, one Sunday in his neighborhood church, that that community was celebrating what God had done in their midst. Amazing ministries in this church. Now, Paige and I were there, along with other pastors and theologians and professors, all celebrating this great ministry there at this church. And many of us had a moment to speak of Christ's transforming work through that ministry. But then, 12-year-old Jose stepped into the pulpit. It changed the room. Jose shared his experience of Christ. He told us how God was on the move in his life. He revealed how Jesus had changed him, how Christ had saved him. It was powerful. It was captivating. It was humbling. I had a theological degree from Princeton. 
And Jose was failing middle school. I had a background of privilege and knowledge, and Jose had a background of disadvantage. I could read scripture in the original Greek and Hebrew, and Jose was lucky just to have a Bible. Although I spoke with intelligence about the doctrine of Jesus Christ, Jose spoke with sincerity as a friend of Jesus Christ who loved Jesus Christ and followed Jesus Christ with his whole life. Dare I say it? Jose revealed the hidden things of Jesus Christ better than I. Jesus says that God has hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Thank you, Jose, for teaching me this truth. Thank you, Jose, for showing me that those who have learning and knowledge often have preconceived ideas of who Jesus is so that rather than coming to Jesus, they come to their own knowledge. Was that me? You see, if, if we put Jesus in a theological box, we assume we have him figured out. But friends, Jesus is not boxable. Our world tries to tell us who Jesus is. Our textbooks try to tell us who Jesus is. Our theology tries to tell us who Jesus is. Our preachers and teachers try to tell us who Jesus is. But the only way to truly know who Jesus is is to come to the real Jesus yourself and know him. Do you know him? He says in verse 28, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. A real relationship with the living Jesus Christ changes us from small box thinking to expansive thinking, finding joy and peace and freedom and, and childlike refreshment in Jesus Christ. So why hidden things? Well, of course these things are hidden things. They're hidden things to those who study about Jesus. They haven't come to the real Jesus for themselves. So that's why Lake Grove Church seeks to double our children and youth through radical hospitality. We want them to know these hidden things. We want families to know these hidden things. We want all ages to know these hidden things. We want all who are weary and heavy burdened to know these hidden things by coming to the real Jesus Christ who gives us rest. Praise God. Amen. That's holy hospitality. Now, I believe God was actually laughing with delight this past week as our leadership stepped out in faith for holy hospitality. See, we've been struggling with something for nearly three years as a leadership here at the church. For nearly three years, we have been trying to build a play structure to let our community know that kids belong here so that we can share Christ with them and their families and with the community. But there have been delays, and the cost for this play structure has become much higher than expected. And the price tag, to be honest, the price tag became impossibly steep. We didn't have the funds. Yet, uncharacteristically, our trustees voted to move forward with a project because it helps reach out to families for Jesus Christ. They stepped out in faith, believing in God's call on Lake Grove Church to share Christ in spite of finances. So they, their, their proposal then came to our elders this past week who, who also stepped out in faith, amazingly voting unanimously to move 
forward even without the money in hand. This, this, this was risky. We don't do this. What a crazy step of faith. But there's more. <laughs> Actually, you're going to think I'm making this up. But it's true. You see, unbeknownst to the elders or trustees, a donor stepped into my office the day before who told me how thrilled he was that we are reaching new families for Jesus Christ. And he had no idea what the elders and trustees were voting on, yet he wanted to... He wanted to give us a check for, I couldn't believe it. He wanted to give us a check for the entire outstanding amount of the play structure. <laughs> and I could just hear God laughing with glee in my office. You see, this donor stepped out in faith to join God's work here. And he had no idea that our leadership had just stepped out in faith too. And when I shared this news with our elders, there was amazement and joy and laughter in the boardroom. Don't you see? We shakily step out in faith. And God said, ha, I got this. You go for it. You see, our trustees, our elders, that donor, our leadership, all stepped out in faith to join God's movement in our midst of sharing Christ with a world who desperately needs it. And friends, we are blessed. Now, don't get me wrong. This is not about a playground. It's about inviting a weary world to the joy and rest and salvation of Jesus Christ. It's about so much more that is still to be done here in our midst to expand ministries and missions. It's about stepping out in faith with holy hospitality as we expand our ministries and strengthen our local and global mission efforts. So will you join us with Jesus Christ, partnering with him? See, Jesus asks us to step out in faith saying, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you, what? Yes. Rest. Are you weary? Are you heavy burdened? Are you seeking refreshment? Step out in faith. Come to the real Jesus, and you will find refreshment. Now in a moment after the anthem, we will symbolically step out, step out into faith, giving our lives to the real Jesus by coming forward with our commitment cards, expanding our capacity to reach more for Jesus Christ. Now friends, if you are a visitor, please do not feel compelled to do so. But I do encourage you to come forward anyway as a, a commitment of giving yourself over to Christ even if you don't put anything in the basket. But today, as a family here, we are committing our time, our prayers, our resources, our energy to join Christ's transformational work in the world one life at a time. And so let's step out in faith. Let's come to the real Jesus. After all, he says, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you what? Rest. Now that is holy hospitality as we grow in Christ, one life at a time. So let's come to him. Amen.